How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? This is Twigger coming at you with another high ELO commentary. This time featuring, I believe it's actually my first EU commentary, um, SK's Ocelot. SK Gaming, currently in the EU LCS. They're currently sitting at the bottom of the totem pole there along with uh, Evil Geniuses, but Ocelot being one of my favorite uh, AP mid players. He's actually going to be playing Vayne in the bot lane this time, so a little bit of a unique champion for him. I don't think I've ever really seen him play Vayne, but... The best thing about these top tier players is that they can pick up champions and be absolutely stellar with them, um, even if they've never played them before. But I definitely think that Ocelot has played Vayne in the past, so he should be uh, pretty decent on this one. And one of the best things that I uh, that I like about Vayne um, is that she's such a technically skilled player. Well, I'm not saying that right. She's such a technically skilled champion in that um, her skill cap is very, very high, and you can make plays like nothing on her if you know what you're doing. But then again, if you don't know what you're doing, you can also suck miserably uh, like I do when I play Vayne. But um, seeing some of the plays that have been coming out with Vayne, it's, it's just been nuts. I don't know how people do it, just tumbling and ulting and stunning and the damage that she outputs. It's, it's pretty, pretty nuts. So it's going to be cool to see what Ocelot, such a technically skilled player, can do on this Vayne. Um, this is a ranked solo queue game. This is Diamond ELO. Um, so we should see some pretty good plays here and some unconventional picks, I'd have to say, coming out for both teams. Um, we have the Ziggs in the mid lane. Mad Comp playing Ziggs. You don't see Ziggs very often at all. Um, ever since I think like Prawley did it back in like week 7 of the EU LCS in the spring split. Um, he made an appearance and did very well. And I love Ziggs. I don't know why he's not played more frequently. As long as you get your blue buff from your jungler... I, I just find his his poke is insane, his damage is nuts, he has an escape ability with his W, I, and he's got that almost um, almost global effect with his uh, his ultimate, that, uh, that giant bomb. So I, I find he scales well into the late game as well, so I, I'm not sure why he's not played more frequently, but uh, glad to at least see him in this game, so at least I get to commentate a little bit of Zig's play. And uh, the other con unconventional pick on the blue side is Talon. Um, we used to see him quite a bit back in Season 2, him being the, uh, the main counter for those AP mids when you would put him in the mid lane against people like a Morgana who was popular back in Season 2. Um, but now that you have the release of like Zed and Kha'Zix, he's really kind of fallen on the wayside. Um, people don't really like him as much as playing somebody like Zed or Kha'Zix who, or even Jace, who are just, they find much stronger AD mids um, than... Talon currently is, but also taking quite a bit of damage in the bot lane. A uh, turret shot going down onto Tristana as well, though, so a lot of damage being traded in this bot lane. Also, it's really going to start dodging those death sentences, or it's going to be the death of him. <laughs> God, I hate myself. But a <laughs> great condemn and triple uh, silver bolts coming up, but there's the death sentence, and this is. Is it going to be the death of him? Yes, it is. I'm glad I made that joke right then and there. But there's the pickup onto that Tristana, and Lee Sin going to pick up a kill here as well, so two kills coming up for the bot lane on uh, the red side. And a great flash over the wall from uh, Nami, but not going to be enough to escape the grasp of the Elise, but I think Lee Sin is going to be able to pick up this uh, kill, so there we go. Two kills for the Lee Sin, one kill for the Nami. Uh, sadly, Ocelot did fall. He did get one assist out of it, but uh, out of the three kills, definitely not the position that uh, he wanted to be in. But uh, very glad I made that uh, death sentence joke right when he gets hit by another damn death sentence. Come on, Ocelot. I know that you can uh, give us a good game here. But uh, just talking about the EU LCS, because um, I never really get a chance to talk about the EU LCS because all I really commentate is uh, the NA, uh, the NA scene. So um, SK Gaming, as I said before, in the bottom uh, ranks with uh, EG. And then you have uh, NIP, which has, I, I honestly, I've been loving NIP recently. They've pretty much been one of my favorite teams. Um, but then, you, like, just, I find the scene there in, in Europe, they have so many strong, strong teams. Like, the battle for top spot is so, I, I find so much more epic right now than the NA scene. Because um, right now in the NA scene, I find that, like, Cloud9 is just dominating everybody. Um, but you don't have that in the European scene right now. Like, you've got Alternate, Fnatic, NIP, um, Gambit Gaming. Like, all of them are doing incredibly well. Um, but none of them are just, like, the team. But, uh, I'm going to talk about that later because also taking a lot of damage here. Nami's, uh, 
Aqua Prism not landing. A play coming out. Is this going to be enough? The E going down onto Ocelot. Is it going to be enough damage over time? I don't know if it's going to be. Ocelot is going to survive with just barely any health. And they managed to pick up a kill out of that one onto the Thresh. Sadly, Nami was the one to pick that one up, but we'll take the uh, the assist. But Shen's ultimate coming out to try to save the Ziggs. I don't know if the bleed is going to last for long enough. He's going to survive too. Unreal. Great Shen ultimate saving his... Uh, his P counterpart Ziggs well not his counterpart what the hell am I saying I cannot speak today guys this is just it's been it's been a day it's it's only the morning too uh, I guess that's it it's the morning I haven't eaten yet I haven't had my coffee so it's uh yeah that's a thing <laughs> but Ziggs managing to survive with that uh, very very clutch Shen ultimate um, they didn't manage to pick a kill up off of it but now we're seeing why Talon was that kind of counter to the AP mids in the uh, the mid lane because his burst damage is just unreal. And having that ability to silence, as we can see, like if Ziggs doesn't plan accordingly, he's not going to be able to get that W out, which means he's not going to be able to get that escape down. And if Talon is on top of you as Ziggs, good luck getting away from that one. Um, he's going to silence you, you're not going to be able to escape, and you're not going to be able to burst him down. So... Um, tricky position for the Ziggs to be in, but played that very, very well, did escape that one, and we're seeing he does have a bit of a CS lead, 54 minions to 45 minions of the Talon, and Talon going for uh, the double Doran's Blade alongside Vayne, doing the same thing, but really kind of want that early game dominance, that I need damage now kind of build. And uh, also, it's just a little bit behind, which is why he's going there. But Lee Sting coming in for a gank, getting a great jump onto the uh, Tristana and her Buster Shot. Great death sentence pulling Lee Sting away from Tristana, but a stun going down onto Thresh. I think he's fine with dying for that cause. But Lee Sting's still going to try to chase down this Tristana. His flash is not available, and it doesn't look like Talon was anywhere near coming in for this one. He's got to land his Q. He does land his Q, and there's the kick for the finisher. So, killing spree for Bart on this Lee Sin. Pretty unreal play there. The Buster Shot was actually great, knocking Lee Sin away, um, even though we did get that. I believe he put a ward down there to try to get the uh, the Dragon Kick backwards towards Vayne and Nami, but using that Buster Shot, getting him very far away. And uh, a great Thresh death sentence, but sadly it just was not enough. That Vayne Condemn killing off that Thresh, and then just the nice chase potential that Lee Sin has, um, considering that uh, he's landing his Qs pretty darn well. So the farm game continues. Both mid players now do have their blue buff. So going to be expecting a little bit more action in there, I suppose. And let's take a little run down the CS. Up in the top, we have that lovely top lane rise, which uh, I can't remember who started that. Was it Shy? I believe it was Shy who started that one off. I believe he's from CJ Antis Frost. Um, and it's just, it's so annoying. I don't know if you guys have ever played against the top lane rise, but... When you're playing a standard top lane champion, um, somebody like a Darius or like Shen or Singe or something like that, like it, I just find it so remarkably annoying because his poke is incredible. Um, he can last it very, very well under turret with his uh, with his overload. Um, it's just, it, it's very, very annoying. But uh, he is currently winning that top lane matchup. Uh, Shen actually going in on him, trying to do as much damage as he can, but Ryze just going to Rune Prism him up and uh, do a couple overloads and run away. So, 68 to 58, nice lead for that Ryze. 43 to 40, very even in the jungle, but Lee Sin sitting with three kills and two assists over that. Uh, two kills and one assist over that at least. But the Flash coming out of the Ryze, there's a Runic Prism. His ultimate has been popped. I don't know if he's going to have enough to get out of this one, but ends up getting cocooned by Elise there just at the right time. And she's going to get a lot of damage down with her percent damage. I think this might actually be enough to kill. The red buff has procced, and that's going to be a kill. So at least picking up that Ryze in the top lane, he just got a little bit overconfident trying to uh, Flash Runic Prism that uh, Shen. And uh, at least was just there at the right time. That's what you get for just having... Uh, a good jungle on your team who just kind of understands what's going to be going on. But there's the Shen ultimate coming out very, very early to make sure that he can be here for this counter game before anybody goes down. The death sentence lands and the shutdown going to Thresh. Not the person that you wanted the shutdown bonus on, but hey, you could at least survive that gank and even picked up a kill, got the shutdown. So definitely can't complain about that. Very good call on that Shen to do a... Uh, an early ultimate rather than a reactive ultimate. It was very much he wanted to be part of that fight, not just being, um, I'm going to save your life. It's, I want to save your life, and we're also going to get a couple kills here. 
Talon coming in to see if he can clean anything up. There were two very low people, but Zig's doing the exact same thing, making sure he can come and defend his team. And Elise is now heading down into the spot as well. She's probably going to pick up Wraiths first. But uh, we still have yet to see any team attempt to do this dragon. Um, there's currently no wards from either team on the dragon, so it's, it's going to become kind of a, a pertinent thing to get at some point. Um, just to kind of seal a little bit of a lead. We are currently sitting 15.8k to 14.6k, just over 1,000k. That's <laughs> 1,000k! So much gold! I can't believe Blue Team is still in this one! Um, <laughs> 1,000 gold lead for this red team, 6 to 4. Um, no turrets yet, which is actually very surprising considering the way that uh, uh, the meta's been going recently of these very, very early uh, turrets. Like, three minutes and 50 seconds these turrets normally go down so to be sitting in a game with no turrets down 12 minutes in um, it's kind of a nice change of pace <laughs> like not seeing these turrets go down so early and seeing all these uh three mans in one lane and stuff so it's it's going to be interesting but here comes lee sin the q landing onto thresh but elise is here for the counter gang it's it, the jungle presence currently in this game has just been incredible they are so good at uh, being in the position that they need to be to counter gank or to set up good ganks. So I got to give my props out to Elise and Lee Sin for this game. They are playing very, very well. Um, Ocelot picking up that uh, Bilgewater Cutlass. Definitely going to be going for the uh, the Blade of the Ruin King, which means that Ocelot's not necessarily going for the more team fight phase. Um, for more team fights, but there's the ultimate coming out of Lee Sin and the Nami ultimate, but the Nami ultimate actually stopping the Lee Sin uh, kick from going all the way back. Luckily, it didn't matter, but I didn't know that that would actually happen. It completely stopped Lee Sin's kick from going back. It just stopped him in place, which normally you would want that to happen, but Lee Sin's trying to get him all the way back into his team. So, interesting little tidbit there that I did not know. That will counter out the Lee Sin ultimate, but um, just what I was saying about Vayne. If Vayne is going for the more team fight oriented phase, um, going for that big damage on multiple targets and really helping out your team. You normally see them go for like the Bloodthirster um, into the Phantom Dancer, but when you're going for that Blade of the Ruin King, he is definitely going for that kind of more duelist. He will definitely be helping out his team because you've got that Shen and the Elise on the enemy team who are going to have pretty decent amounts of HP by the end of this. Um, so the true damage coming out will help a lot. Um, but when you go for that Blade of the Ruin King, the active really helps out with your dueling potential. Uh, being able to slow people down, keeping that Elise off of you, keeping that Shen off of you. Uh, really keeping your threats at bay while you're still doing a ton of damage. And Vayne, I would argue, one of the better duelists in the game. Especially, I would say, one of the best ranged duelists. And a Flash being burned by Nami. I don't know if that was really necessary, but... Uh I guess it's better to burn a flash and just be sure that you're not going to die versus possibly dying just because you didn't use your flash. So, nice little gold lead being built up here. 21.4k to 17.8k. I guess they took the dragon. I don't know why I didn't see it. Maybe I did see that and maybe I just didn't comment on it. But <laughs> picking up the turret, picking up the dragon, it looks like uh, definitely making a pretty good gold lead for themselves. Almost 4k now, just under 4k. Not 400k, 4k. I'm going to say it right this time. But um, also just farming away, did manage to get another kill, so 2-1-2. Two, two. Uh, wish he had a couple of those kills that went on to Nami, then he would be a pretty terrifying Vayne. Because um, as we all know and we all hate about Vayne, if uh, Vayne starts getting a few kills and starts really getting her items up, that hyper carry Vayne in the late game is disgusting. But we have Shen's ultimate coming out onto the, uh, the Ziggs, but looks like Mad Wicked on the rise is going to be... Uh, popping out the damage onto Ziggs and picking him up. He's doing quite a bit of damage right now. He doesn't yet have his Rod of the Ages, but he's definitely working towards that. And his tier is stacking. I wonder what his tier is currently at. 284. So he does still have a long ways to go. Um, the thing about building Rise like this is that you have a horrible mid-game. Um, you really don't have any kind of a damage spike because you have to wait for your tier to build up and you have to wait for your Rod of Ages to stack up. So yes, the mana is going to be building for him, which is going to increase the amount of damage that his spells do, but he's not going to hit a damage spike until quite later in the game. But I think with the team comp that these guys are running, they're kind of wanting to go into the late game. With a talent of Ain and a Rise, really definitely the, uh, the triad of we're going to screw you over in the late game. Because, um, when Talon gets into the late game, I don't think his scaling is nearly as good or as Kha'Zix or Zed. 
but um, he will get to the point where basically Ziggs or Tristana will just be completely wiped off the map. And that's exactly what I think they're going to look for, is just take one of those big carries off the map completely, and then let Rise and Vayne just run around killing everybody. But here comes Suresh, an interesting kind of engage. They do see that Ziggs, there's the explo the big, big bomb coming out. The Ignite's going to be enough from the uh, the Thresh to pick up the Nami. I'm sure they wanted to give that one to Trisana, but Ocelot is now on a killing spree. Good for him, because he was having a little bit of a rough start. But there are three people still in this bottom lane, so it was a one-for-one one trade. I think that kind of went in favor of the red team, simply because the blue team had to waste two people coming down for that gank, while the red team just had their jungler down here. So Ryze has just been able to push that top lane down. He's already got one turret, and he's already working down on the second turret. And may I remind you that Ryze is single-handedly the worst turret pusher in the game. Um... I know a lot of you guys already know this, but for those of you who don't know, when you're attacking turrets, the damage going onto the turret is based off of either your AD or your AP. And fact of the matter is, Ryze doesn't build either one of those. His uh, He does build AP now that they change him to uh, a little bit more of a hybrid between AP and mana, but he does tend to just want to stack that mana to make his abilities stronger. So without building any AP or AD, he does crap damage to those turrets. So the fact that he's pushing up that lane and doing such a good job and already on the, uh, the second tier turret, it, it's a pretty big deal. Um... Because it means that the uh, the blue team has been letting this happen for a while because he's so bad at pushing these turrets. Um, and it looks like Ryze is just not scared at all. He's chilling in that lane. He already popped the uh, the Hex Drinker from Zed. Uh, not Zed, on uh, Shen. And he's just staying in this lane. It's currently 2v1 and Ryze is having no issues with this at all. And he has yet to go back to base. He had those items for quite some time. So looking at his money, 1,700 gold. Um, he could definitely go back and finish that Rod of the Ages. So looking down at the gold, who's currently in the lead here? It looks like actually Vayne. So our Ocelot is doing a very, very good job. 6.2k to the 4.9k of Tristana. So way to go, Ocelot. I'm very glad to be finally commentating my first EU commentary and uh, it looks like Ocelot's doing pretty darn well so very very glad to see but um, I'm waiting to see him in the team fight phase um, where he can pop that ult oh I can't believe that didn't stop the uh, the recall but every now and again that happens but I really want to see Ocelot in the team fight phase where he can pop his ultimate run around try to pick off the squishy targets uh, I think he's going to do a very very good job of that well at least I hope he does and uh, Talon making his way through the enemy jungle here. Look at the damage coming down onto Elise. Oh, dear God. Talon just basically said thank you for that red buff. And uh, pretty much spider meat boot, right? It's just absolutely dominated her. And there's the ultimate pop. I also want to get in on this uh, Tristana, but the Shen ult being popped. The Nami ultimate being used, but the death sentence landing onto Ocelot. He is going to get blown up here. It was a great Nami ultimate to try to stop that one, but it looks like Ocelot just wants to get hit by these death sentences. Really doesn't, uh, pretty much that YOLO swag running in there. Be like, you can catch me with the death sentences. Oh, crap, I'm dead. And Ziggs coming in to try to support his team. It is three on four currently in this bot lane. So I don't know how the enemy team is going to feel about this one, but there's the, uh, the Thresh going down. The uh, big atomic bomb missing. Um, it's the Mega Inferno Bomb, that's what it's called. Mega Inferno Bomb. A, uh, a Shenton coming out onto the Rise, and look at the damage coming out of Rise. One more Overload would have killed him, but... Oh, and that auto attack's not going to be enough. The Lee Sin shield keeping him alive. I don't know if Lee Sin's going to be able to make it out of this one, though. No, he's not. So he sacrificed his own life to keep that Rise alive. Um, yeah, not the best trade. Uh, a very, very l prolonged fight uh, for both sides. Um, what did it end up being? Lee Sin died, and Vayne died, and then Thresh died. So it was only a two for one. But I guess technically it was a two for two because uh, Talon had killed Elise prior to the fight at Red Buff. So really, I, I would say it was kind of even there. Uh, I believe they did get the shutdown bonus onto uh, Ocelot, though. Yeah, there it is. So UBE, UBE. Um, I don't even know who that is on the team. It was Tristana. Oh, so you know what? I'd actually put that fight a little bit more in favor of the blue team because getting that shutdown of 432 gold onto the Tristana, who was currently not doing overly well. 1, 2, 4. She was 0, 2, 4 before that kill. Um, definitely the position that uh, Tristana wants to be in, getting a little bit more of that, uh, of that gold. The change in her pocket. 
but another dragon going to that red team completely uncontested. So looking at the score, 32k to 26k, the, the lead just keeps on increasing um, ever so slightly. We're now at 6k gold lead for that red team, 11 to 7. One turret still to zero. The blue team has yet to take a turret. They seem to always be, uh, be pushed to their turrets. And um, I, I don't really think the blue team... They, they need to start making moves because, yes, they do have the Tristana, who is an incredible late-game carry, but I do not believe that Tristana is going to beat the Vayne in the late-game. If Vayne gets to late-game, I think Tristana will lose to that. But look at the damage coming down. The ta oh, jeez, Talon is just doing so much damage. Um, the Flash being used by the Ziggs to get away from that one, so overall, very well worth it. But the, actually, the Flash and the Ignite being used by Talon to try to pick that one up, as, as well as the ultimate... Um, and still didn't manage to pick that one up, but Talon coming a little bit from behind here. It looks like we have a 4v4 brew in here. And, uh, wow, the Aqua Prism landing onto Tristana. There's the Nami ultimate as well. I think Tristana is going to die. The Nami picking that one up. Um, Vayne did get, uh, Buster shot it away there. And the Q landing onto Thresh, but there's a Shen ultimate coming down. It's going to be leaving this Rise alone, though. And Shen is now here, the uh, Disengage coming out from the red team, and they're just going to allow Rise to push this top lane, because certainly there's nobody there. Oh, great tumble from Ocelot, picking up the Thresh, but now I think Ocelot might pay for this with his life. He is going to die, but there's the ultimate coming out of the Talon, picking up that Elise so, so quickly. And it looks like uh, Shen might die here as well, because the red buff proc is currently onto him. There's the Aqua Prism. Oh, he misses the E! <laughs> oh, but he still picks it up with the bleed. <laughs> that was really funny. But, um... There we go, actually. So you know what? Uh, now I'm seeing the item build coming out of Ocelot. He's kind of going for that... Uh, the mix in between of the team fight versus the, the dueling. Because he's picked up that Phantom Dancer. So... Sorry, I had to sneeze there, and so I had to turn off my microphone. Because I did not know how loud that would be on the... Uh, on the audio feed. <laughs> Probably would have uh, heard a lot of headphone users out there, but... <laughs> Um, so he is going for that kind of mix between duelist and team fight presence. His attack speed is going to be very fast with the Blade of the Ruin King and the uh, the Phantom Dancer plus his boots. Um, I wonder what item he's really going to go for next, whether it be like a Last Whisper or if he's going to move more towards the defensive items. Um, if you have enough attack speed, you really don't. It's not as necessary on Vayne to get that. Um, that last whisper as it is for many other uh, AD carries because of her true damage. As we saw there, just three shots and boom, there's uh, pretty much a third of Thresh's life. So it could very well be that uh, if Ocelot doesn't go for more, uh, more damage. <laughs> okay, I have not seen that on Nami. That is pretty funny. Just uh, having a seizure over in that mid lane, having a time, laughing, little fish on land. And Lee Sin picking off this red buff, stealing it away from Elise. Now going to get the hell out of there because it looks like uh, Elise and Trisana were heading over that way. But Elise now going into the mid lane. And Ocelot seeing if she can take down, well seeing if he can take down this Shen. Currently doing a great job. The, the damage coming out of the true damage and the Blade of the Ruin King on Shen is just so much. And you can't really run away from a Vayne. That's the big thing. Her passive is such a great tool for chasing. And it looks like we might have a little bit of an engage here. The ultimate being popped onto the uh, the Thresh from the Rise. Nami ultimate coming out. Going to knock up everybody. The Q landing from Lee Sin. He is going to jump in on there. Kick back the Ziggs. Great kick. The Mega Inferno Bomb coming down, but not picking anybody up. The Ignite also going down onto the Nami. So, uh, picking up another kill. So, very, very good engagement there. Uh, for the red team, 41.2k to 31.2k. Every time I come back, it seems to have gone up by 2k. So 10k gold difference here, 18 to 10. Three turrets uh, in the lead for this red team. And Ocelot picking off the blue buff. So they're just really kind of suffocating the enemy team here. And there's Elise. Oh, I wonder if Ocelot knows that this... <laughs> Repels to try to get over to the blue buff. But oh shit, it's gone. Right, Ocelot took that one. And now we have a blue buff on Talon and on Ocelot. Scary, scary stuff. And uh, the best part, Ryze has now built up his Rod of the Ages. Um, it's pretty much fully stacked. Uh, it is fully stacked. No, it's not fully stacked yet. So a couple more minutes and that'll be fully stacked. And we're only about 100 off of him stacking up his uh, Tier of the Goddess fully. And um, I'm wondering if he's going to use that, uh, that Blasting Wad to either, it looks like, finish off maybe a Abyssal Scepter. 
Um, but he might also be using the Negatron Cloak to go into a, um, a Banshee's Veil, which helps Rise very, very, uh, very heavily. Um, see, look how slow he's pushing this turret. Man, Rise, you are a boss. Do you even lift, bro? But uh, looks like we're kind of in a stalemate here. Uh, the, God, the red team is kind of figuring out what they want to do now. Um, Baron is still up, and they're currently just letting Ocelot free farm on this vein, which is a terrifying proposition. Because if you let Vayne free farm, he's already at 205 CS over the 174. But the Shen ultimate coming down onto the Thresh that's been engaged on by Lee Sin and Talon. And a great death sentence grabbing the Lee Sin. The Nami ultimate coming from downtown, knocking up all three. Is he going to have the safeguard available? He's going to safeguard two Nami and actually escape this one. Oh, but the Elise getting kicked away, stopping that uh, that onslaught onto Lee Sin. And it looks like Vayne trying to get in here to do some damage. There's Shen Taunt coming out, but missing. And now it looks like we're going to have Shen versus Vayne again. But look at the damage, nearly half of the HP. Onslaught trying to its best to pick up some kills here and also trying to escape. He does not want to be here anymore. But now the team's coming for a little bit of help. Rise picking up the Thresh, but Vayne being picked down from the Ziggs. It looks like Shen's going to go down as well from this Talon. It looks like that's going to be the end of the fight. Elise gets picked off as well by the Nami. And it looks like Ziggs is now in a horrible position because Rise is right up there. Double kill for the Talon. Great, great fight. Four for one. Also, I'm managing to survive for quite a long time while still doing damage in that fight. I thought he was just going to get blown up by the four. But uh, managing to do a lot of damage and running away and then his team's support was spot on just running and knowing that they could take that fight. A beautiful Rise ultimate to do so much damage to that clumped up group of people. Oh, unreal. And it looks like he didn't use that Negatron Cloak for an Abyssal Scepter. He used the Blasting Wand to finish off his Archangel Staff. And that must be pretty damn close. 728. So by the time they're done this dragon... No, maybe not by the time they're done. You know, oh, he's not even going to the dragon. So maybe if he actually went to the dragon, it would have been stacked up. But give it just... Five more spells or so, and, and he's going to be pretty much stacked up fully. There we go, the Seraph's Embrace. So you know what it was during the time of the dragon, so I guess I'm not wrong. But now that he has that Seraph's Embrace, there is just so much damage that's going to be coming out of this rise. Looks like my phone's ringing, but I am not going to answer it. I'm in the middle of a commentary. But there we go, there's the surrender. Four votes for zero. So very, very well played from Ocelot. Very well played. Um by the entire red team. Everybody just played superbly that game. There was not a weak link on that team. Um, I would have liked to see Nami get a few less kills um, and give them to Ocelot, but, you know, 4-2-15 is it's pretty much an Edward kind of uh, support score, but still doing an incredible job. And SK Ocelot, unreal game as Vayne. Um, you could definitely tell he's not an AD carry, but still, the mechanics were all there, played very, very well, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that one, my very first EU cast um, of Ocelot for the first time, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that, I'll hopefully be putting up a few more uh, EU games, so we kind of get a nice little mix of NA and EU, and if, hey god, if I can get any Garena or Korean games, I'd love to get those up for the, from the OGN, but uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that, and I will see you guys in the next High Yellow Commentary.